I can put that can put all that to a stop, Brother Tim. His name is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. He's already defeated Satan once. And I tell you the truth, he'll defeat him again. Amen. Yeah. We as a people have to remember that God can stop it all. Because nothing can happen unless what? God let it happen. Those of you that have your Bible, if you will turn with me <coughs> to the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. Matthews, chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathering girdle about his loins. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in joy, confessing their sin. I'll say that again. Confessing their sins. The only way we are going to be saved, the only way we are going to be delivered, church, is repent. That is, confess your sins to the Lord Ask the Lord to forgive you, then go on about the Lord's work. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, That God is able of these stones to raise the children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the garden. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Listen. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me and Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be, so now, for thus is becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus was saying that uh, I must be baptized for this to be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. So therefore, we see that here we have Jesus 
come into John to be baptized. Going to chapter 4, starting at verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, that's when he was speaking to sin, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Amen. Going over quickly to verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So ladies and gentlemen, I tell you today, if you want to turn back to the Lord, then repent of your sin. Go to the Lord and ask God to forgive you of your sins. And the Lord is such a loving and mighty God that He will forgive you. That's right. So all you got to do is open your big mouth and ask Him. How do I know that? Because I've had to do it several times. Just like David, I've had to come to the Lord. Well, I'm going to put it this way. Just like David, I had sense enough to realize that I needed to ask the Lord to forgive me for what I had done so that he could lift me up. All right. Thank you, Lord. See, when sickness comes, when problems come, the Lord is already there. When your finances are not worthy as you would think, Jesus has already started working on them for you. So I tell you this. Repent of your sin. Trust in the Lord. And know this, church, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you have the Lord on your side. Amen. I don't care if the weapon is on your job, if the weapon is in your home, if the weapon sometime may be you. But it ain't going to prosper unless the Lord says so. That's right. So put your trust in the Lord. Repent of those things that you have done. Let the Lord know that you are sorry and that if he forgive you, you will do his will. In the book of Proverbs, it tells us about trusting in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 5. And it says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, mm -hmm. and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Hmm. Hallelujah. My God is a forgiving God. If I put my trust in the Lord and if I get out of my God's way, my God will straighten my situation out. Amen. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the supervisor on the job say. Ain't nobody in control but Jesus. Amen. And I'm here today to tell you that 
Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. He's God all by himself. He is the mighty one. He is the great I am. He's the love of my life. He's the only one that will understand when troubles and trials come that I need you, Jesus. I need you right now. Right now. And he's such a loving God yes, he is. that he will be right there for you. Yes, he will. So all you got to do, number one, when, when situations are where you don't understand, you don't know how you're going to fix it, leave it alone because you can't fix it. But turn it over to Jesus. Amen. Give it to him. If you got to walk out your front door, walk out there and say, Jesus, I give it to you. All right. I can't do nothing with it. I've been messing up all this time. I'm tired of messing up. I need you to straighten this out now. All right. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Go on back in your house. That's right. Put a smile on your face. Because before you even walked out that door and asked, he was already working it out. That's right. Repent of your sin. Then trust in the Lord. And then know that it's going to be all right. All right. Because can't nothing do nothing unless the Lord says so. Amen. 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 Satan will try to make you think, church, that ain't nothing going to work out. He'll try to make you think that, hey, they ain't going to give you the money for that thing that you need it for. But all you got to do is look at him as for the ladies. Now, men, you don't put your hand on the hip. You put your hand in your pocket. That's right. And say, can't nobody do it but Jesus. And since Jesus already know about it, I'm going to tell you, devil, it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Return back to God. See, a lot of us, God has done so many wonderful things for us. He turned us around. Yeah. When the devil was waiting down on the corner, hid behind the oak tree. The Lord took us back around across the pine tree area and took us on down and showed us where the devil was. And then when he showed, before he showed us, he defeated the devil. All right. He'll do it. You know, I, I, I look at the Bible and studying the word, I look at Second Chronicles in 20, where Jehoshaphat, had a big army coming against him and his people. He didn't know what he was do, was going to do. He didn't even know how to fight that bird chamber. That's right. But he had sense enough to know, I'm going to talk to the Lord about it. So he called what? He called a fast for all the people, the children, for everybody. Let us go pray to the Lord. Let us go talk about it to the Lord. And when Jehoshaphat and all of them came before the Lord, the Lord put a word in Jehaziel's ear. Go and let them know that the battle is not theirs. It belongs to me. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. In, the, in, in, in our areas, whatever you are going through, if you, if you are going through addiction, if you are going through uh, a job situation, I want you to know this one thing, that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. Jesus will step in yeah. at the last hour. Yeah. When you think there is no more help, yeah. here comes Jesus. That's right. Why you say that, preacher? Well, in the book of Luke, 
chapter 8, it tells me about the man that had a, a daughter that was sick. And everybody kept coming to him, telling him that his daughter was dead. And so he looking at Jesus to come on, come on, Jesus, and heal my daughter. All right. But Jesus wasn't in no hurt. Hmm. Why? Because Jesus knew what he was going to do. So as Jesus was on his way, church, here come a lady from 12 years issue of blood. Now I remind you, this man probably walking along with Jesus saying, uh, Jesus on his way, but when is Jesus going to come home? I'm, I'm paraphrasing that and some things right. here. I know that's what most of us would have been done. Jesus, my daughter dying. You need to come home, man. Come on, hurry up. But Jesus stopped because there was a need right then. This woman was an issue of blood. Yeah. So the whole crowd around Jesus, because Jesus is getting popular now, they've seen things that Jesus could do. They've seen Jesus heal. They've seen Jesus deliver. Yeah. So the woman didn't let none of that bother her. She didn't let anything hold her back, Shirley. She eased up through that crowd. I can see that. Probably pushing folks, you know, let me get up there. And when she got up there, she didn't try to grab Jesus. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And when she touched the hem of his garment, what she had spoken happened. Jesus turned and said, who touched me? All the time knowing who it was because he knows everything. And the woman was so scared that she didn't come forward right then. But eventually she had to tell the Lord that it was her that touched him. And what did our almighty Jesus do? Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, thy faith has made thee whole. So I'm speaking to you today. You may have something happening in your life. You may have something happening somewhere. Nobody knows but you and God. Call on God to work it out. Turn it or loose. Give it to him. And the Lord will work it out. Why? Because Jesus loves you. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. I don't have to worry about you telling me Jesus loved me. I don't have to worry about uncles or anybody saying Jesus loves me. Why? Because he has brought me out of situations nobody could do but him. So therefore I know he loves me. I know he cares for us. I know he'll fight my battle. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. Give it to him, church. Turn back to God. If you have anything that's holding you back, today ask God to forgive you. Go to him and just 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 get book wild praising and talking to the Lord. And next Sunday you'll come in here and dance all up and down. Why? Because God will be the fixer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I thank you for your time and uh, I thank you for uh, worshiping in this house with us. I pray that the Lord continue to be by our side, continue to give us the increase and the blessings that are needed. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. And as of this day, I don't know about you, but I'm going to make sure I turn back to God. Amen. 